SpaceX continues Starship's testing as they wait for government approval, but are they being delayed for nefarious reasons? The Polaris program is a thing. If you haven't heard about it, I'll catch you up. Starlink missions are on deck, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. On Monday, Elon twatted video of the destacking of Booster 4 in Starship 20 now that his presentation is over, so SpaceX can get back to work putting the vehicle through its paces. For the first time, trucks delivered methane to the orbital tank farm and thus began a series of ground tests for the launch site's ground support equipment. Starting with some venting through the Starship's quick disconnect arm on Tuesday and venting from the tank farm on Wednesday. Many of you are probably aware of the past issues SpaceX has had building the facility, but these days it's looking like things are running smoothly. Cryo tests for SN20 also started back up on Wednesday, progressing through Thursday, providing SpaceX with more data surrounding Starship and the GSE. And this morning, SpaceX began cryo testing Booster 4 while it rests on the orbital launch table. Here are the current road closures scheduled through next week in anticipation for more testing. Meanwhile, up Highway 4 at the construction yard, SN22 was fully stacked using 21's nose cone. It's not clear why, but such an event hasn't been done since 20 stacking about six months ago. The next major step toward using the Starship Super Heavy rocket to colonize Mars, besides upcoming static fires, is launching 420 to orbit. And yes, last we heard from Elon, 420 will be the rocket to do it, but that could always change. Especially as government delays continue to allow the development of upgraded vehicles like Starship 22 and Booster 7 to catch up. I reported on Monday's video that the FAA has again pushed their release date for their final PEA to March 28th first delayed from December 31st to February 28th, citing a need for more time to review the 18,000 public comments that were submitted. But now they're claiming a need to account for further comment review and ongoing interagency consultations. Now, for years, many of you have projected that the government seems to be doing what it can to slow SpaceX innovation, and not just with Starship. These suspicions began after Demo-1 returned successfully from the space station, and the company was pulling way ahead of its competitors, who were suffering failure after failure at the time. I mean, we weren't sure if Bob and Doug were ever going to launch. Now, I really never took that position too seriously because, well, there are just a lot of moving parts and influential factors to be considered when it comes to the timeline of developing a rocket. And for the record, I never considered myself a conspiracy theorist. Although over the past couple of years, I've certainly been called one. But if you haven't been called a conspiracy theorist these days, then it's probably either you're too cowardly to speak your mind, a fool who still soaks in MSM propaganda, or you personally favor the progressive agenda of the elites in power. Russiagate turned Obamagate, Fauci and the lab leak theory, two weeks to flatten the curve, safe and effective, Ivermectin, Biden's China connections, Hunter's laptop, Gretchen's kidnapping, BLM, CRT, Capitol Police, espionage, Jeffrey Epstein. Trust me, I could go on with a lot more examples. These days, the difference between conspiracy theory and conspiracy fact is about six months. So with that in mind, I urge you to take the following with an open mind, not as fact or fiction, but as an unproven possibility. And it starts with the honest question, is the government, through agencies like the FAA, purposefully delaying licenses and approvals for Starship orbital launches because they perceive the program as a threat. Now that Elon's 2022 presentation has made the rounds, Political broke a story this week that a high-profile Washington space lobbyist is saying NASA and his congressional allies, who are in competition with SpaceX, are quote, shitting the bed over Elon's Starship program, watching with a sense of awe and horror. Basically, the bureaucrats in D.C. know what SpaceX has accomplished so far, and they're scared for their donors, constituents, power, and relevancy. I mean, for God's sakes, is it really that hard to believe? It's a very logical and rational viewpoint to hold if Elon is who you're facing off against. In 2016, SpaceX disrupted the entire market with the first reusable orbital class rocket booster, something that was said to be impossible. And now they have no real competition, only that which is superficially created with pitiful public-private partnerships for the sake of variety or to use a woke term, equity, at the cost of the American taxpayer. And despite what Joe Biden would have you believe, Musk is also responsible for the EV market, so he has long proven himself to be a formidable opponent. Meanwhile, NASA, with Boeing, ULA, and several other rocket manufacturers, are building the Space Launch System, a $2 billion per launch, non-reusable rocket that will inevitably be lost to the dustbin of history, along with the thousands of jobs the program created, which has the elected representative of those workers shit and bricks. The lobbyist who spoke to Politico isn't a fan of Elon and SpaceX himself. Obviously, his job too is on the line since he represents Elon's competitors. But at least he's honest enough to recognize that betting against Elon hasn't worked out so well for anyone to date. Quote, it's like you keep saying he can't do it, but it keeps working. It keeps working. I think people are scared. He's starting to make people who were never believers 
think he might succeed. So is there a concerted effort happening behind closed doors to hinder SpaceX for the sake of NASA and friends? Given what Political just reported and what we've all seen happen over the last couple of years, it certainly seems possible. But on the opposite side of that coin, does it really make sense for the US government to throw roadblocks in front of our nation's leading defense and space innovator while our enemy, the Chinese Communist Party, makes headway of its own thanks in part to international IP theft? Sadly, who knows what to believe these days. It is interesting though that the FAA Administrator, Steve Dixon, announced his abrupt resignation this week, claiming he wants to spend more time with family. But regardless of everything we just talked about, can Elon even be stopped? As noted during his presentation, if the FAA continues to delay, SpaceX will just simply shift their focus to launching Starship from the Cape, and construction for its East Coast 39A launch tower has already begun. In case you missed Monday's breaking news episode, SpaceX announced their new partnership with Inspiration4 Commander Jared Isaacman to prepare for future crewed Starship missions. And thank you all for joining us this morning as we unveil plans for the Polaris program, which is a series of pioneering Dragon space missions that will aim to rapidly advance capabilities for human space exploration and ultimately culminate in the first flight of SpaceX's Starship with humans on board. Player's program will model NASA's Project Gemini of the 1960s by completing a Crew Dragon mission to the highest Earth orbit man has ever reached and performing an EVA around 500 clicks up. This first mission is called Polaris Dawn. It will be followed by a second Crew Dragon mission, culminating with a manned Starship mission to orbit. If you want to learn more about the Player's program, I'll put the link to Monday's video here on YouTube and I'll post it in the comments on Rumble. And in the description for both platforms is a link to my Locals page where the entire press briefing is available for supporters. After hearing my question for Elon during the Starship presentation last week, VR Interactive Tours company, My Three Ideas, reached out to show me their creative vision that they made, along with design freedom, for crewed Starship's interior. So since I was just relaying your question for Elon to Elon, I thought I'd share their website with you so y'all can have a little fun as we wait for the future to arrive. Links are in the description. We do have another Starlink mission coming up. Scheduled for Sunday morning, Falcon 9 will lift off from Slick 40, carrying another flock of satellites for SpaceX's Starlink Constellation. I'll be streaming this one live on YouTube, and we'll have another segment of Elon's base twats lined up for it. Elon's base twats. The drone ship for this mission, a shortfall of Gravitas, already left port in preparation for booster recovery. Its East Coast sister ship, just read the instructions, is just about ready to return to service after suffering some damage during December's CRS-24 booster landing when the brand new first stage was dropped by the ship's Octagrabber. We could also see another Starlink launch happen from the West Coast at the end of the month as well. And when that candle does light, we'll cover it live on Rumble. Elon wrote on Monday that Starlink currently has over 250,000 user terminals connected to the network. The system is working well in Australia and New Zealand. Announcements for more countries coming soon. Probably not China though, they aren't exactly fans of Starlink. During a February 10th press conference, China's spokesman for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs reiterated China's claims to the United Nations from late last year that they had to twice maneuver their space station due to close encounters with Starlink satellites. And so China is now proposing formal lines of communication be opened up with the US for the sake of safety. The United States responded by writing to the UN, claiming we never heard from China regarding these close approaches. And that analysis by the US Space Force's 18th Space Control Squadron found no evidence of such events happening. SpaceX keeps close tabs on their satellites and always notifies their contacts at NASA of close approaches to the ISS. However, the company has to work through the State Department to get notifications through to China. Space News reported that according to a study by ComSpock, only about 7% of all close encounters with the Chinese space station are Starlink satellites. Most debris comes from China's own 2007 anti-satellite weapon test. And finally, some of you may have heard over the past several weeks that a Falcon 9 second stage from a February 2015 launch was about to slam into the moon, sparking outcries from members of space society accusing SpaceX of lunar littering. Well, it turns out the astronomer who discovered it, Bill Gray, corrected himself and found that the object that will slam into the dark side of the moon in March is actually a stage from China's Long March 3C rocket launched in October of 2014. At least China's not plaguing the moon with COVID. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. On November 26th of 2018, NASA's InSight Mars lander touched down on the Martian surface to begin a year-long mission to study the planet's interior composition and Mars quakes. Now that that primary mission has passed, NASA has extended its funding through the end of 2022. But it may not be so lucky thanks to the planet's dust storms that have been known to kill a robot or two. On January 7th, the probe went into safe mode to protect itself from a huge dust storm. 
We woke up on January 19th and things are now finally looking nominal. The solar panels producing almost as much power as they did before the storm. However, this is probably just temporary. The Martian dust now cakes inside its mechanical body and NASA says it may only have enough power to work just in the summer. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Shout out to my supporters on Locals and those of you watching on YouTube and Rumble. Engaging on both platforms is how we reach the biggest audience and keep these videos pumping. Do have an nominal weekend. Until next time, Godspeed.